on my Twitter account, that's my banner is like, do cool things. Like it's, it's not a matter of, are they the most, like most directive thing with what we need to do for our content area? Or is it maybe the most uh, direct important use of time? That's kind of what I've applied here at UETN is how can I create cool opportunities for teachers, for administrators, for students across the state of Utah in every facet of what I do. My name is Matt Winters and I work for Utah Education and Telehealth Network and I am a senior technical trainer, which means I teach, go around the state teaching teachers all about educational technology and working with teachers in various capacities. I came out of the, the punk world. Um, I got into punk when I was in high school and I've always kind of dressed like this. So I had a friend in high school that I'd go to shows with and he's like, you're the most intimidating person, not because of your size, but you look like you're headed to a job interview at a punk show. And I'm like, I know. Um, so I, I, part of the big things about like a punk world, the punk world is if you're doing it right, you're DIY, you're doing it yourself. And so when I started doing radio work, um, I, I, I was given a platform. I was a literal platform. Like you're, you're able to have your voice go out to 20, 30,000 people at a given time. And I went, okay, what, I'm gonna run with this. And so I learned very quickly, and this was the, the age of MySpace. Um, and I would cold DM bands that were coming through Utah that I had no rights DMing and talking to and just say, hey, I have a radio station, come by, let's let's talk. I ended up interviewing every band that I possibly could, going to shows every single night, and just, it really opened some doors. And what it taught me is, is that everyone's a human being, and that you don't need to be afraid of them. They are just as interested sometimes in you as you are in them. And so that really helped me to kind of work that through. And then once I got into working at the college level and then in the K-12 world is, um, I remember going to a conference with a, a buddy of mine, Quinn, and we were walking around the expo floor, and I was just doing my thing like, hey, how do you get grant money here? How do you get this thing here? How do you do this thing here? And we got done and he's like, you just have such a attack mode for you know that they have something that would help people in Utah, and you just go out and ask them. There's no like politics. And I'm like, well, what, how am I gonna get anything? I started traveling a lot when I was younger. So I went to England and Scotland and Ireland when I was in, co in college. And I realized once I got into grad school that there's a large pool of money for teachers to go travel. And once I got in the K-12 classroom, that just expanded that. So teachers out there watching this, there's money out there for you to go travel, go do it and email me if you have questions. Um, but I ended up going over the five years that I was a, a K-12 educator doing teaching English before COVID. I went to Japan, I went to Turkey, I went to Seattle, I went to Chicago, Washington DC, Philadelphia, um, all on teacher money grants that allowed me to make connections with people from all over the world. So um, there was a unit that I used to teach about um, North African literature in the Middle East, um, some literature from that area of the world. And it was always really fun to talk to my students because um, I'd be like, yeah, my friend that's in Morocco or my friend that's in, uh, Libya, or not Libya, uh, no, yeah, he's from Libya. Um, or like my friends from Palestine, like being able to say these people, I know them because I've met them in real life and I can point to them as kind of these are amazing people and here's what their stories are. And so I love being able to do that with my students and kind of always blew them away. But now as a, in, at UETN, working through making connections with other people in, in the ed tech world, it's just, they're doing cool stuff, we're doing cool stuff. Let's put it all together in a melting pot and make everything better for teachers and better for students and better for educators because if you don't ever ask that question of, of networking and connecting with people and maintaining those connections, then you're never really gonna get anything done. There shouldn't be a fear there. Hey Matt. Hey Daddy. How's it going? The day I got hired, was um, my boss Justin said, uh, we'd like you to help out with the podcast. And so I've, I've been in podcasting for a long time and did radio before that. So being able to be a part of UEN's homeroom and seeing that, uh, that grow from when it, was, when it started to now 
Um, and now I get to be a part of it and bring in some of my favorite people from around Utah education, but then around the, the country has been one of my favorite projects. Um, working with teachers on Google projects and, and doing and supporting the Google Educator Group Utah um, and working with that team has been incredibly rewarding. And then of course, I this year I'm, I'm, I work with USET, the Utah Coalition for Educational Technology as their president. And so I'm really excited to support Utah and support UETN, UETN through um, running the conference this year. So lots of different projects, big scale projects, but I think that's the, when it comes down to it, anything I do at UETN is very focused on what is best for Utah education, how can we improve Utah education, and how can that help support teachers to achieve their goals in their classrooms. I've always been a tech nerd. Um, there's this great show called Moon Boy where they talk about technology as an idiot's tipple. Um, and I kind of really dug that idea. <laughs> So um, I, I've always loved tech and I used to take down, like break apart computers and break around like electronics, um, but I was poor. And so like I wanted to make movies and I wanted to learn about new technology and it, I didn't have the opportunity because there's no money available. And I, I lived in a school that, or I went to a school that um, didn't have money to provide for that. And so, when I got into teaching in the classroom, I was already really technologically like enabled as a teacher. I was one of the first high school or college teachers to use Canvas in the state of Utah, and like I knew Google really well. And I, I was working with Adobe as a uh, audio engineer and radio and things like that. And then um, got into the K-12 classroom. And I went, oh, there's just a bunch of tools here, um, and there's also grant money. So my first um, semester teaching in K-12 and as a ninth grade English teacher. I was like, I'm gonna write a grant and the grant's gonna be for a 3D printer because I wanna learn how to use a 3D printer. And I wrote that grant, got it, got another grant subsequently, so I had two 3D printers sitting in my classroom and I was 3D printing these little figures for D&D &D and like all these different things for kids and we were doing all these great story time activities and um, my principal came in one day and she, it was during PTC and I had no parents in my room and we spent an hour and I walked her through 3D printing and all sorts of stuff and she was like, yeah, this is amazing. And so that's kind of where it picked up was I started doing that work and then um, they picked me up as a coach and I started teaching other teachers how to do it and it just kind of built from there kind of organically. I kept finding conferences and opportunities and I wanted to learn other things like photography and video work and I wanted to learn uh, how to edit those videos and so I started learning Premiere and all sorts of stuff that kind of built naturally over time because I have a natural curiosity as a person and so once that built up over time it just kind of now I have a massive skill set that now I can use to help influence other teachers to do uh, cool things in my classroom. I always view my job as, as kind of helping to fill the technology need in the school and then in the classroom and with the teacher so trying to find ways for the um, teacher to really dive deeply into the technology. So switching over from like, let's just talk about how to run Google to let's see how Google can operate as a tool for creativity and engagement throughout your classes and, and across um, the curriculum in your schools. And so that's been like a big focal point for benefits for the teachers is not just learning where to click and what to click, um, which is important and we're not gonna knock that down, but it's also important to know why we're clicking and what we're doing with that technology to better our classrooms, better our schools, better our students' lives, and push towards a better vision for what education can look like in the state of Utah. So outside of work, I'm as nerdy as I am inside of work. Uh, and I often get accused in, in like jobs of going in too many directions. My personal life is the exact same way. So, um, Anybody that's ever been on a Zoom or like a digital meeting with me knows that my background is real and it's like thousands and thousands and thousands of CDs and records. Um, I used to run a record label for a while as well. We pressed uh, vinyl records um, and I have a collection of somewhere between five and 10,000 CDs, records, vinyl, all sorts of stuff. So my happy place is going to like a vinyl record store anywhere in the world. I read relentlessly. Um, this year I'm somewhere in the vicinity of 220 books. Um, and I've just started tracking that over the last couple of years because a few years ago, I, was, I think it was right around the pandemic, I was like, I don't feel like I'm achieving in my personal life. I don't feel like I'm achieving uh, my, my reading potential. And then I started tracking what I read on a weekly basis. Like, oh yeah, I'm achieving, <laughs> I'm doing really well. Um, and a lot of that's, you know, graphic novels and I will fight 
people on the idea that graphic novels are books. They're, they're important, and comic books are books. And so I read a lot of those, I read a lot of science fiction. Um, and then I hang out with my dogs, which are, uh, I have two lassie dogs. They're named Bear and Ted, which is Teddy Bear put together, if you didn't get that. Um, and then just like traveling. Um, a lot of the pictures are from like places I've been. Um, one of my favorite trips as a teacher was I got a chance to go to a NASA launch um, for the InSight mission, and I was on their social media team for that, um, which was incredible. I got to go um, be a part of that and ask questions on NASA TV of NASA scientists. I, I love the students I work with, I worked with, but now I get to work with a statewide classroom of teachers that they get to go back and take what I've taught them to their district, their buildings, their school, their LEAs, and then I get to see their successes. And so I'm working with adult learners now and teachers that that scope of what I did in my classroom where it was 150 kids and granted there's no knock on that, now I have a bigger pool and that those teachers will influence other teachers. And so it's been really cool. That keeps me going most days of knowing that if I go out and I do a training and there's only three people there, I still influence those three te teachers that will then influence three more teachers and, and, and that just cascades down the line. And so that's, been, that's what keeps me going and just seeing all the cool things that are happening in the state of Utah. Like, it's great going to national conferences like going to ISTE and South By and all sorts of conferences. But what's been really amazing for me is being able to see how well respected and interesting that are interested that people are in what's happening in Utah. Like I gave a presentation at ISTE last year or in June where basically after the presentation it was all about UETN and the works that's happening here, what we do with PD, how we support, what the contracts look like, all that sort of stuff, which was awesome. But I had people come up to me like, I wish we had an organization like that in our state. I wish we had um, things that are an organization that supported our PD statewide and that really became kind of this this place where we could go to for extra help with technology and, and, and uh, education. And so it's been really rewarding to see those presentations happen and meet people and keep that, that process going as well.